You're watching The Heart of GAFCON. My name is Dominic Steele. We're bringing Vaughan Roberts and William Taylor in. Vaughan, of course, the Minister of St Ebbs in Oxford and William Taylor, the Minister of St Helens in London and uh, two of uh, the Great Britain's leading evangelical parishes. Vaughan, um, uh, what was your reaction first to the statement we've just heard? I felt grief, um, first of all. I, I, I'm grateful for this, the statement, but mm. the circumstances in, in, from which it was said and the fact that it was focused very much, part of it, on, on what's happening in England caused mm. me great grief that um, there is a fundamental breach in the communion. We've seen that for a long time, mm. but now England is contributing to that massively. So a very somber note, mm. but I felt not simply pointing a finger in an accusatory way at others, but a self-recognition that we all need to repent. So I think the tone was right, mm. but behind it was a deep grief and seriousness uh, about what's going on in England and, and a very urgent call to repentance. Mm. William? Yeah, exactly the same. I mean, I, I mean when, you, when we get to the piece on the crisis in the communion, it is desperately, desperately sad. At the same, same time, huge encouragement you know as those who are facing a lot of um, hostility and opposition and wanting to resist um, great encouragement it's christocentric it's evangelistic it's very easy to get kind of diverted by the crisis but it's focused on christ to whom should we go jesus evangelistic then to the world um, confessional and therefore connectional you know the word of god right at the heart of being a genuine and authentic Anglican and that confessional nature, look at the piece on the authority of the Word of God, enables connectional, true uh, fellowship. And then I think compassionate, you know, there's that loving, lovely section at the end of compassion and concern, but also clear. I mean, you know, it describes what's going on in England as blasphemous, mm. you know, and it's just, a, to be honest, it's quite a relief when you're in the thick of it mm. to hear somebody say that. The, um, the condemnation of um, the Archbishop of Canterbury was really as strong as it could have been. And the, there is really a sense now that if 85% of the communion have said this, then we've got an empty chair. St Augustine's chair is empty. Um, we have no leader of the communion at the moment. Is that how you would read it? Well, I would actually, I'm afraid. And again, that's part of the... It's, in one sense, it's right. Why should England continue, as uh, uh, Foley Beach said on his opening address? You know, it's quite, quite kind of imperialistic, and I can understand the sentimental attachments and the sense of, you know, mother church, if, mm. if there, there is such a thing. But you get that, you can understand that sentimental attachment, um, and therefore there is a real sadness because I don't think it would have happened like this if there hadn't been a departure after repeated warning. I was at GAFCON one, two, and three. Yeah. You know, there's been repeated, and there's that little section of, you know, there's been repeated warning. And I really don't think people here would want to walk away, as it were, no. or rather, but actually Canterbury has walked away. And mm. so that, I think, is part of the grief. It's the end of, uh, you know, it's the end of an era. It has huge implications for the Commonwealth. Mm. You know, it's not just, um, I mean, it is the whole spiritual advance mm. of the gospel, but it's much bigger. Mm. You know, the, the Commonwealth is, you know, founded in, in some ways on, you know, the, 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 the willingness of England to give a lead spiritually. Mm. And when that goes, you question quite what will follow. I, I agree with that. Uh, if I may, just to touch on a different note, which I think could easily get lost, but the pastoral note mm. comes across um, powerfully and clearly. Mm. And uh, what we're dealing with in the West is a cultural captivity, mm. which is promoting behaviour that is... Uh, which is wrong. And we, and we need to call out that cultural mm -hmm. captivity. But, of course, we all come from cultures. Yeah. And there are failings and blind spots in all our cultures. Mm. And, and one of the wonderful things about a deepening communion is we're able to challenge each other mm. cross-culturally. And sometimes there's been accusation that Lambeth 110, 1998 is, is referred to, but only part of it. Mm -hmm. And the wonderful thing in this statement is a clear affirmation of the whole of, of Lambeth it. 110. Yeah. Yeah. And a very clear calling out that every individual yeah. is made in the image of God. Yeah. A calling out against the vilification of the meaning of, of anyone. Yeah. 
And these are things that we need to continue to challenge one another across continents. Yeah. And uh, I've, I've seen that beginning to happen powerfully this week. Yeah, and I've, and I the have statement too. reflects yeah. that. Mm. Yeah, um, and, and I have too felt that, and not just from people from the West, but from people mm. from Africa. Yeah. Um, and I've been excited to see that, yeah. I think there are just two other things. One is, um, I don't know how much you know your listeners realise how the statement is crafted. Mm -hmm. That actually it is a statement from the whole conference. Yeah. You know, that's gone out for individual response and been edited, and then each delegation has had a chance. And you look at it, and you can see where the English delegation have, if you like, edited mm. the statement. So this isn't something that was you know prepared in advance. It's come. It's a spiritual thing, you know, I think, in that we've come together and we together come out. Obviously, there's a drafting group, but we together come out with that. Um, yeah, I th that's very important. The other thing I think is really helpful... Just before you give that one, I felt really res heard and respected mm. in that, um, as an Australian delegate, I sent a little note of um, feedback in, and uh, three hours later I got a WhatsApp message from one of the statement committees saying, could you just elaborate on that point? Do you know? And so, um, now... That I didn't get exactly the words I was hoping for, but I was heard. <laughs> yeah, and there is the influence of the pastor's heart. You know, you're right in there at the cutting edge, Dominic. That's you're shaping global Anglicanism. No, no, no. But, it was it was half a sentence. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's right. But the other the other side of it, I think, is um, when you look at the piece for the English situation, it's symmetric, and for our unity, that is immensely important. So there's a willingness of the GACOM primates to support and continue supporting those who have left. But then if you look at it closely, there's an equal willingness to stand with, pray for and support. Now that for our unity is immensely important. So I was delighted to see that symmetry, very helpful. Now, what happens now? I mean, I mean, obviously your bishops will read this statement. Do you know, obviously you'll have conversations with them about it. Um, what are the kind, how, where do we go from here from both of your points of view? Well, the big thing now is uh, it's in the hands of the bishops. Mm -hmm. They've heard uh, the strong opposition at Synod, actually. It mm. needs to be reminded, remembered that between 40 and 45% clergy and laity voted against. There's um, over a thousand clergy have now signed it compelled to resist. You've got the communion very clearly saying, um, the vast majority of the community, please don't go ahead with this. Mm. So um, we need to be praying that they, they would repent and, uh, and pray actually that uh, more of the bishops would see that the consequences of what they have set themselves upon and that uh, more clergy and laity across the Church of England will see actually if they feel compelled to resist and take action, which will be very costly, they will stand with the, the vast, vast majority, majority of the community. So, so it's a very timely conference. This is saying, and it is not just GAFCON, this is Global, Global South, South and GAFCON. This is a, a united, yeah. very united response. So you stand with the vast majority of Anglicans and of course, Christians down the ages and throughout the world. Mm. This is Catholic apostolic doctrine that we're mm. talking about. So I hope it will steal the, those who are standing and actually caution even those who want to go ahead with this and, and make them think again. I mean, it is a Rubicon moment, I think, mm. and I don't know if you know this, but today, this very day, the first groups to think about how to take things forward from living in love and faith and the last February Synod, they are meeting right now. Mm -hmm. So, you know, how this will land in those groups. But, you know, if provision is not made, it really is a Rubicon moment, and I think what will happen if provision is not made is, or if repentance doesn't happen, um, the Church of England will become, you know, a tiny little dot mm. in the Anglican Communion. And I think I've said before, you know, it'll be like a derelict shed in a field of turnips, which mm. is echoing the Isaiah's kind mm. of language. It will just become a, an irrelevant hut. Yeah. Um, it, which, which really is what Rico was saying to us in saying the Holy Spirit departing. Yeah, but it's, it's, it's a Rubicon moment because if that happens, those who are planning for the future mm. will see no future in the Church of England. Yeah. And therefore, all the young, all the evangelical, you know, there will be no possibility of succession in our churches. Mm. And, and, and so we will have to start planning. And I'm not going to tell you <laughs> quite what those plans are, as we discussed the other day, but we'll have to start, you know, putting in place, okay, well, how do we transition? Mm. Because 
if they keep going in apostasy, you can't with integrity say to a 25-year-old, this is a great platform to minister Christ Jesus. You, you simply can't. And, and actually, it's not me saying it to them. They are. They're working it I out. mean, as an, I don't, don't want to go on about it, but we, we tend to send five to ten into the Church of England each year in, tr for training. And we sent one last year and we'll send none this. Now that is, you that know, is as a, a church, that's just a big change, yeah. yeah. So yeah. they will all find other places routes, to serve Christ Many Jesus. of them Anglican. Yeah. 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 Vaughan, one last word from you. Well, William mentions provision. And I think it's very clear any provision for a different oversight needs to be clearly differentiated. If the Church of England continues to in this direction, it can't be, oh, well, we, the kind of thing they did over the ordination of women priests. Mm. It's got to be quite clear we are not walking together. And that's what this conference has said. This is not a secondary division. This is two very different paths. And if there's going to be provision, it needs to recognize that we're, we're not walking together. Mm. Vaughan Roberts, William Taylor, thanks very much for talking to us. Yeah. Vaughan Roberts, the uh, Senior Minister of St Ebbs in Oxford. William Taylor, the Senior Minister of St Helens in London. You're watching The Heart of GAFCON. My name is Dominic Steele. We're brought to you by anglicanaid.org.au and we will be back in just a moment.